Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you how you can turn your normal 7 segment display into a fancy one uh, with lava or uh, water. And also you can see in the back I got an own counter design that I will explain afterwards. But before we do this I quickly want to mention that I designed this nice little fade lighting. Uh, it was an uh, idea by Etho to build this and um, this design that I built was featured by Xisumavoid in a video, so I will put a link to this video by Xisumavoid in the description. So uh, let's assume that you built a counter design like this, or you just found one on YouTube, then uh, chances are very great that it will work. Um, it works with almost every counter design, uh, only uh, thing is that those levers have to be the position where the lamps are powered, but that's a very normal uh, way to do it. And to turn this into your lava or water one design, you just need to put uh, some observers at the corners. So when the lamps at the corners turn on, then you want to um, dispense your lava. And when they turn off, then the observer gives another signal and you want to get the lava back into your thing. So let's quickly build this on all sides. Um, so next thing you want to do is uh, you want to make sure that your lava don't spill everywhere. So example, if you're uh, displaying a zero, you don't want to have lava in the middle there. So we um, take the torches, we put the torches uh, into the spaces that are left, and then we put the sticky pistons on top of them. So it looks something like this. And then you just fill in um, all the space in front of it with stones, except for the places where the where the dispensers are. Now you're almost finished, you just have to put some glass or signs or whatever you want to use, but I um, I think glass is the best to use here in front of it, so the lava doesn't spill out in the front. And once you've done this, you can actually use your design, so just put in the last few blocks, and then we go around uh, to the back. And if we now uh, say we want to do a 3, then you can see that the blocks um, where the um, lines of the 3 are, they get retracted, so the lava can flow there, and the lava gets uh, dispensed at all positions where there is a corner of the 3. And that's actually everything. So now you can turn your counter design into a counter design with lava or if you want to do it with water you can just put water buckets instead of lava buckets into the dispensers. So uh, before I go on and show you my counter design I think I will just show you how all of this looks when it is actually in action. So when I turn this clock on you will see that it counts uh, on the right side and I'm using water on this side because water flows faster than lava and uh, that makes it easier to recognize the numbers uh, when they are changing that fast. And um, you see that the right one uh, overflows at 10. So if you got a, a 9, the next one is a 0 here and it counts 1 up here. But if we wait a little bit, you will see that when we go to 6 here, then it actually goes to 1 over there because it's like minutes and seconds. Although the second card is uh, currently a little bit faster than seconds, so I can show it better to you. Yeah. There were a few things that I wanted to achieve with this counter design. So 
I didn't bother about uh, noise because uh, there are already pistons and dispensers in the front here. So instead I wanted to make it free wide so I can fit the displays exactly uh, beside the other. Another thing that I wanted to do was to make it a uh, random access. So it doesn't matter in which um, order you use the numbers or want to display the numbers. Um, typical very small counter designs only allow to display the numbers one after each other because they use some piston feed tapes. Um, but I did go for this one hot code with uh, random access memory. Now the whole thing consists of four parts. In the front uh, we have uh, this extension that I uh, showed you in the beginning of the video. And then we got this flip-flop here. So if uh, one line gets a uh, pulse, then it stays on. So I press this button once and now this top line is activated. And if I want to display another number, then it has to be cleared. So all those blocks are pushed down, which makes sure that all of those flip-flops are reset. And I got four on this side and another three on the other side for the seven lanes. So, of course, I don't activate them with a button, but instead I have this huge grid of observers. And when I push one of those buttons down here, then the whole column gets pushed up. The observers, when they are moved, then they produce a signal, and this signal then activates the corresponding lines. So in this case, we displayed a 5. And at the same time, when one column gets selected, of course, the previous uh, displayed number should be reset. So when I activate this button, you see that um, this pistons at the top activate. This is because this observer powers this line, which powers all of those pistons over here uh, that push all the others down. And the another thing that happens is that uh, this line over here um, gets activated. So either this piston up here or the piston down here gets activated, depending on whether there is a block up here. Then this uh, powers the block and it powers the piston to push uh, the column down. Or if uh, there is a block down here, as it currently is, then it will power this block and the piston down here will push them up. So uh, that happens exactly at the same time as the setting of the new column and the new number. So all of those get reset and then set to the new uh, number. Down here you see that um, of course you wouldn't want to do this with buttons but you want to somehow um, activate them so you can count for example. And this is done with those torches so I will keep put the torches back in here. Um, but only six because uh, this uh, counter is set to only count to six and then go back to zero. Um, yeah. So what you see here is a red coder, so um, a signal strength decoder. So for each signal strength, there is one slice where the bottom part reaches uh, the block, but the top d doesn't because it's one less than the bottom line. Uh, so when this happens, only at this slice, uh, the repeater at the top gets depowered, but the torch at the bottom uh, doesn't get powered yet. So this torch goes on, and this is a selected column. And in the back here, there's uh, the counter design, which is a signal strength counter. So. Um, the signal strength gets from 15 down to a certain threshold where it gets pushed up back to 15 and also the next gets decremented by one. And uh, I'm not going into too much detail, but you have uh, this circuit right here, which stores the current uh, power level. And 
this part is for the threshold so depending on how much items you got in here it will count down to 5 or to 10 or whatever and on this side you got the subtraction um, so when this comparator uh, turns on then it will subtract from the stored uh, signal and it will subtract one because there's only one item in this uh, dropper but only if this repeater unlocks the comparator so that's how the decrementing is controlled and then uh, a redstone signal of 15 uh, is going to be displayed as a zero uh, 14 is one 13 is two and so on uh, so you get the idea so when the signal strength goes down the counter will actually count up okay so i think uh, that's actually everything that um there was to see in the, the, about this design i will show it to you a little bit more and um <coughs>